All right, welcome back. And the last video we talked with Michael about getting set up and the installation of Tiled. We also looked at the UI for Tiled and some of the uh, inspector panes and different features that you would expect to have in your workflow. In this video, we're gonna talk about tiles versus objects. Uh, and uh, Michael, take it away. You know, Corona at its core um, is sort of a scene uh, scene-based engine, right? You load up a bunch of graphics, you're gonna do a bunch of stuff with them, and then you're gonna release that scene back into the ether, um, release the memory, release the images. Tiled has a whole workflow around working with what they call collections of images uh, inside of a map. And so what we're gonna do is create a new little map here, and we're gonna create a new little collection of images, and we're gonna uh, work with it. Out of the gate, we just hit a new map. Uh, access what kind of orientation we want. Uh, orthogonal, um, even though it sounds crazy, is just a basic square grid. So if you think of a grid in Photoshop, that's what you want. Uh, tile layer format. Uh, for large maps, you can uh, use Base64 and actually Zlib compression on storing the map. Uh, but since we don't really store a lot of tile layers, at least the libraries that we use inside of Ponywolf and what we'll be uh, releasing to the community, and what we have released to the community really works with CSV or basically just, you know, uh, number, you know, comma separated numbers of tiles. And then the tile render order uh, basically talks about, hey, how do I want these tiles to render on an individual layer from the right side down? Then we have our map size and our tile size. When we're working with collection of objects, our tile size really doesn't matter all that much, but I will say uh, using this tile size as a grid to kind of snap pieces together, which we'll see in a little bit, is really crucial. So when you design your art uh, for use inside of Tiled, thinking about things living on a 32 by 32 grid or a 64 by 64 grid uh, can make a lot of sense. And also setting this tile size allows you to set the entire map size. So if I have a 32 by 32 tile size and my map size is 100 tiles by 100 tiles, this gives me a map that's 3200 by 3200. When you think about your, um, your screen size and config Lua inside of Corona, uh, you may have a 320 by 480 config size or 1024 by 768 config size. This gives you kind of an idea of how much of your map is going to be able to be displayed by one screen worth of a scene in your game. And this will make more sense later. For now, we're going to leave all these things default and we're going to create a new map. Um, I can do some zooming in and zooming out. And you see, we actually have a relatively big map here. If you think of each one of these squares being 32 pixels, this makes for you know, quite a big map and something that would be good for scrolling. So now we're here, like, what do we do? How do we get things uh, into this? And so the easiest thing to do is go in and create a new tile set. And I do this straight from uh, the tile set menu here, this little new button. We'll say, hey, what do I want uh, to make a new tile set? Give it a name. We're going to call it platformer. And then the type here is really important. So if you do a type based on a tile set image, what it wants is basically a large tile sheet made up of tiles that are the same sizes that you have here. You know, we'll have to talk about margin and spacing and another uh, and why that's important in another video. Uh, but again, this is all for kind of tiles. What we do more often is a collection of images. And when I do a collection of images, notice all those options go away. And it just says, oh, I see you want a collection of images. It doesn't know what size these images are, uh, the relationship to each other, any of that stuff. And I hit OK. And now I just get this blank tile sheet here. And so I don't quite know what to do at this point. I go, well, you know, I want to put something in here. This is where this little plus sign comes into play. When I hit this plus sign, it's going to say, hey, what images do you want to drop into here? So let's go out to our desktop. This is a little bit of a preview of the images that we're going to have uh, in our Corona Platformer template. It's only going to let me select the PNGs. I have a PSD living in here. It's not going to pull that in. It doesn't know what a PSD file is. It knows PNG files. I think it also... Uh, supports bitmap and a few other things that maybe Corona doesn't support. But if you stay in the PNG, transparent PNG area, you'll be fine. And I'm gonna select all of these images and I'm going to hit open. Now that I'll have my tiles in, uh, my tile set, now I need to create some layers for these tiles to go on to. Uh, so I'm gonna delete this default tile layer because we don't need a tile layer in this map. What we need is an object layer. In this object layer, um, you can think of as a Corona display group that's going to hold images that we select out of this collection of images. Um, and in the tools that we'll be sharing and teaching people how to use, naming these layers are really important because you can go and find these layers with commands uh, later. 
what's the difference between a tiled layer and an object layer? Yeah, so let's, we can go ahead and put both inside. So I'm gonna go and do a tile layer here and a game layer. So the tile layer forces the things that we put in to be on this 32 by 32 grid. Um, when I think of an object layer, and I drop this little thing on, let me go to my uh, object tool here, so, um, and I drop this on, it's going to give me something that feels much more like a, um, a vector object, right? You notice it's not snapping to the grid. I can also resize it, uh, make it any size I want to. I can also rotate it, um, apply rotation to it. Um, and this becomes kind of a, um, what I would think of as a singular display object that lives in the layer game, that lives in the map, my map. And so it's certainly possible to build uh, worlds out of individual tiles, but when you think about um, you know, Corona, which is much more of a kind of a display object oriented engine, it makes a whole lot more sense to uh, build a map out of individual pieces that snap together kind of on that same grid rather than tiny, you know, in pieces of different sizes rather than tiny little pieces. Um, you know, when I work in an object layer and I want to drop uh, this platform in, I simply just drop the platform in. So when I grab a bigger tile piece, I can grab one of these collection of images and put it in. Um, you know, this happens to have that upper left-hand corner, lower right-hand corner. And you know, we've gotten pretty good about actually even putting the shadow that we want on it, kind of just baked into the image. Uh, that makes it pop off the screen a little bit. And because we've designed it to be a size that kind of perfectly fits on the grid, when I hold the command key or control key down, it's gonna snap that piece into the grid, although, um, we duplicate this object, I wouldn't have to. I could put it on a half of a tile. Um, you zoom out a little bit, I could actually rotate this a little bit and connect them uh, like this. So I get a whole lot more flexibility working with collections of images than I do with working with individual tiles. And uh, the project on a whole is more efficient because these pieces, um, you know, where it might have taken uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different uh, 32 by 32 tiles to make this up. Um, I can actually make this relatively complicated uh, piece out of two, uh, whatever this ends up being, 64 by, uh, uh, 64 by 192 collection of object pieces. And with this, um, I get a lot of added uh, flexibility. So let's go back and look at, you know, we have these in, in almost all of our projects, little colored squares, uh, which you don't really think too much of, but I can take this colored square drop it in. We use this little image placement tool here to drop a collection of image in on a map. Uh, then we use this tool here, our selection tool, to kind of give it handles, allow us to move it and resize it. And again, I can hold down the option key to force it to be resized to our grid. All right, so that's a, that's kind of a look at uh, tiles versus objects and tile sets versus collections of images and working with layers and stuff. So I think we'll move on to uh, kind of composing the scene and maybe move into c talking about custom object properties. So if you guys haven't, uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you can get updates and uh, we'll see you in the next video.